Hey everybody, Masticon here. One of the most common questions that we get asked about Dwarven Forge is, where do you start? You're interested in getting some terrain, but you aren't really sure where you should go. This is probably the most common question we see on the forum, on the Discord, and in Facebook groups. Today I'm going to answer this question in the best way I can, with pictures. Now, the first thing to recognize is that Dwarven Forge is not a really cheap thing to get into. While they're going to be having a Kickstarter in late 2021 with a set of dice holders, we're really going to be focused on getting your first pieces of terrain. Now, if you're only ever planning on spending under $100 on terrain, ever, there's probably some better options out there than Dwarven Forge. This includes making your own terrain. You can You'll also look at some of the other probably under $100. that exist that are made out of ABS plastic, which are a bit more brittle, not as durable, and generally not as nice as Dwarven Forge. But you might be able to get a little bit more if you're only ever going to spend under $100. However, if you've got $100 to spend or more, or maybe you've got some now, but you're going to look to expand on it in the future, Dwarven Forge really has the best range of options as far as terrain out there. Now, Dwarven Forge products come in both painted and unpainted versions. I'm specifically an unpainted buyer. I paint all my stuff myself. This can save you significant amounts of money, but today I'm really just going to be talking about the painted products as that makes up the majority of the people who are looking to get into Dwarven Forge. So let's get started. We're going to look at around the $100 range just to start off. Now, there's three kind of main options I would look at at this price range. The first is the classic Dungeon Core. This set echoes all the way back to Dwarven Ford's first Kickstarter back in 2012. It contains a pretty plain but really versatile dungeon set that covers 156 square inches. There's a lot of flexibility built into this set with a large number of different ways you can build it out. Now, one disadvantage with this set is it doesn't come with a lot of dressing kind of ways to set up. It's really just walls and floors and a few doors. But at $99, this set really gives you the best bang for your buck as far as how you can set it up, as well as just giving you pretty good starting coverage. It's really the first set I'd suggest most people consider. Now, if you're not interested in the dungeon set, the next thing you would look at is the Caverns Core set. Rather than representing that kind of drab stone dungeon, the Caverns Core set contains a lot of really detailed and more colorful elements that give this nice feeling of an icky, wet cave system. The individual pieces in this set are much more dynamic, but you do get far fewer of them. At only 88 square inches of coverage for $114, you're looking at about half the coverage for the price of the Classic Dungeons Core. However, this set can be set up with a, different number, a number of different builds to feel unique, even with this limited number of pieces. The level of detail in the pieces really supersedes the need for that additional bling to kind of make the cave feel alive. So this can be a great set if you don't want to have to find something else to kind of fill in the space. It just gives you a lot less. The final set I'd advise people look at in the $100 range is Zoltar's Game Room. Ziltar's Game Room has all the bling that's missing from the classic dungeon core. It's got four LED light plugs with two sets of lights for each, a magnetic wall with a crossbow trap, huge double doors, uh, and a couple of other pieces of dungeon dressing like a throne, a table, weapon racks. It's even got a light hidden door or a cage that you can put in there. It's a really, really strong set. At, at $129, it's slightly larger than the Caverns Core, but still about double the same price per square inch as the Classic Dungeon Core. Well, this is a great set. It's really limited in the number of builds that you can do with it. It's got a big 4x4 floor and two 2x4 archways. There just aren't that many different ways that you can set it up. You can move the double door around a little, but most of your builds are going to feel pretty similar. That said, it's much more impressive looking than either of the other two sets. I do want to give a quick throw out to a fourth option that exists if you're more into the wargaming side of things. For $98, you can get two of the cottage sets in either Tudor or Stone. These are really good because you can just plop them onto the table right onto a battle mat or any other surface, and they're ready to go as a couple of buildings. You can also stick them together and make one larger building. If you're looking to just kind of add some spice to a wargaming table and check out what Dwarven Forge has to offer, this is another decent option. 
Now, if you're ready to kick in for some more serious terrain at around $200, you're going to have a wider variety of options. I'm still going to assume that you're focusing on working within a single biome, not looking to just buy two. Because if you're looking to just buy two, you can pick two of the ones from the previous options. First thing I'd suggest looking at is the classic dungeon core mixed with Zoltar's game room. These are the two sets that I used when I create the, created the Ruins of Our Last adventure, which includes four different builds just using these two sets. While the adventure includes some other optional sets that you can use to add some more color, this is all you need, and it gave me a lot of flexibility when I was building this. Tons of options you can do. It really does a great job building a small dungeon, or temple, or tavern, or dwelling, or spa, like you might find in the Ruins of Our Last. If you're looking at caverns, though, you should jump right into the caverns mega core. For under double the price, you get over double the coverage of the caverns core. They even throw in a few extra pieces of surface level scenery. This is a great set. Again, it comes with everything you need to kind of fill out the space automatically, plus some extra stalagmites. And at 216, it's kind of the best way to dive into caverns. One other option in the $200 range is the Monster Sewer Set that comes in at 195 and it covers a whole 216 uh, square inches of table space. It's a really versatile set with a lot of different build options, but the disadvantage here is you're kind of always stuck in the sewers. You can't really pretend that the sewers are really a tavern or the sewers are really a temple. So while it's got good coverage, it, it doesn't have a lot of flexibility as far as what it could conceivably represent. Also, a lot of the coverage isn't actually playable space, as the sewer walls are a full inch thick. Your total playable space is closer to the, cl to the classic dungeon core, so it's not actually, you lose a good close to 60 or 70 square inches of playable space. But still, Sewers are a classic adventure location. Everyone needs a, to start off their adventures killing off rats and skeletons in the sewers. One other thing I want to mention that isn't exactly in the $200 range that you can look at is getting into the cities, uh, the city builder sets by picking up a hamlet. Now this set is $265, a really dynamic, or you can even build multi-level taverns out of this. The big disadvantage is that it really only comes with two 4x4 roofs. While you can use the other floors as a flat roof, this decreases the number of floors, shrinking your overall build space, kind of limiting what you have available. While this is a good set that allows for a lot of interesting builds, especially indoors, the city builder sets are kind of designed to be grandiose outdoor buildings, and they're pretty blocky for indoor usage. Yeah, you can build out a neat looking tavern and, and do some things with it, but it, it doesn't have the flexibility of some of the other sets. Now, if you're looking at going at, at going above the $200 line, you'll want to check out another video I'll put out at some point about what to do with $500 or what to do with $1,000. But really, at that point, you're getting in more than just at the base level. You should really be browsing through the Dwarven Forge website to see what kind of options you have and what you're interested in. So I hope this video was helpful if you're just getting into Dwarven Forge. We're excited to see that you're interested. It's a great thing to get into, and there's a lot of options out there, and it's a deep hole once you're in it. So hopefully this cleared up what your first steps may look like, and you can have a great adventure for your players the next time it comes around.